It was Christmas on Dillydale. All the workers were working hard. Dustin and James were busy carrying people and packages up and down the lines. Everyone was happy. Only the coaches, Annie and Clarabelle, were complaining. It's always the same before Christmas, they groaned. We feel so full! We feel so full! Oh, come on, said Dustin. Where's your festive spirit? Christmas Day is almost here. By the side of the track was a cottage with a familiar figure waving to them. It's Bella, said Dustin. Hello! Merry Christmas! Dustin always felt better for seeing her. Christmas just wouldn't be Christmas without Bella, he said to himself. When work was over, Dustin went to see the other workers. All their clothes had been cleaned. Huh, said Danny. Just look at us. Your assistant Bob will have to work fast to get you as good as us. Never mind that, replied Dustin. I have something important to say. Do you realize it's been a whole year since Bella saved us from a nasty accident? You remember when she was sick in bed and... Yes, of course, interrupted William. You told us how she waved her red sweatpants out of her window to warn you about a landslide ahead. And you and Blake gave her present. And you and James gave her presents so and Blake joined in. And Mr. Persnickety sent her to the beach to get better. But, said the other workers, the rest of us never thanked her properly. Exactly said Dustin, so now I think we should all give her a special Christmas party. Everyone was getting very excited, and the assistants felt sure that Mr. Persnickety would agree, as indeed he did. The workers were busy making plans when silence fell. Mr. Persnickety had bad news. The weather's changed badly. Bella's snowed up. James says he'll help to rescue her. You must help too, Dustin. There's no party unless you do. Dustin hated snow, but he said bravely, I'll try, sir. We must rescue her. We must. There's a good worker. You and James will manage splendidly. Dustin and Thomas charged the snow drifts forcefully. Sometimes they swept him aside. Sometimes he stuck fast. And the men had to loosen them. But at the cutting near the cottage, they could go no further. Look at that! exclaimed Bob. Beep, beep! Here we are! An answering wave came from an upstairs window. Then they heard a familiar sound. That's Gobo Fraggle, said Dustin. He's come to help, too. Sure enough, Gobo had his shovel and was working hard to clear a path to the railroad line and safety. At long last, the rescue was complete. Blake and Percy took the tired workmen home. Gobo said goodbye to Bella and promised to take care of her cottage as he watched them all set off. The workers made good time. No more snow had fallen, but the house was dark. There was no one to be seen. Dustin's heart sank. Suddenly, all the lights went on. What a marvelous sight for Bella. Well done, said Mr. Persnickety. I'm really proud of you all. Bella especially thanked Dustin and James. Dustin and James are old friends, she said. And now, Blake, you're my friend too. Blake was very pleased. Three cheers for Bella, she called. Beep, 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 they all called. All whistled. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Dustin Worker and his friends thought it was the best Christmas ever, and Bella could think of nowhere she would rather live than here with them on Dillydale. <laughs>